Uh, my name is Yolanda, Y-O-L-A-N-D-A. Get down, just get down, get down. Just stay down and get down. Alright guys, so we gotta talk about what is probably one of the most dangerous cities in the country. Okay, mm -hmm. one of the most dangerous cities in the world, really. Uh, definitely at least top 30, top 50 most dangerous cities in the world. Definitely at least top three most dangerous cities in the United States. Memphis, Tennessee. Who resides in Shelby County, Tennessee which has seen a surge of more than 17% in overall crime this year compared to last year. And they've seen a 5.4% spike in major violent crime and major property crimes have surged 42.1%. Crime and the surge of crime going on in Memphis, Tennessee is a huge, huge, huge problem that really should be getting national attention. It's not being talked about enough and it's just kind of funny how that works because Memphis was in the news uh earlier this year for something that doesn't really have to do with criminals or at least put it this way not <laughs> street criminals and it's just funny how this city no longer gets any attention after that event happens just kind of funny how that works and that's something i want to talk about here because you know we have one of my signature sellout videos again right i'm going to be called a sellout for talking about issues in in a liberal cities that just happen to be mostly black people i'm gonna get called a sellout because i'm bringing attention to the horrors that are being faced by black people in inner liberal cities at the hands of thugs and criminals okay again i want you to understand right i'm a sellout for bringing attention to an issue that does not get enough attention and if it got attention from the race hustlers of america then maybe just maybe the lives of these black people will be better but again i'm just saying right here's a sellout video as we got to talk about a video that's going viral of a drive-by shooting that interrupted a democrat city council um candidate's interview like literally right in the middle of the interview like live right as they're interviewing uh, there was shots that rang out from a drive-by nearby, and it's kind of a crazy thing to see. Take a look. We report about the city's crime problem almost every day, but today, that problem hit home for one of our crews while doing a story about crime in Whitehaven. We were interviewing a woman about the Memphis PD's plan to enforce the city's teen curfew when out of nowhere, a drive-by shooting across the street. Watch. Gotcha. Say you spell your name for me? Uh, my Name is Yolanda, Y-O-L-A-N-D-A. -A. Get down, just get down, get down. Just stay down and get down. That's okay, thank you, Lord Jesus. Just stay down and get down. It's, uh, now they're coming back. Okay. You okay, Jay? Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus yes. that cover us. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, we should be all right. Drive by. Yep, uh, you saw it, the black car. You can see the playground equipment where children play there. That hail gunfire happened at 11 a.m. in a parking lot between the Whitehaven Community Center and Rains Finley Park. The shooter was targeting an apartment complex across the street. Now, no one was hurt and police responded right away, although as far as we know, no one's been arrested. Thankfully, our crew and Yolanda are safe. She was being interviewed about our next story regarding the city's plans to step up enforcement of the teenage curfew this summer. Yeah, so you see that you heard that. Again, she's doing this interview, and in the middle of the interview, there's a drive-by that is happening probably what appears to be across the street. That is how crazy Memphis is right now. Guys, I mean, I'm so serious. I mean... We have a few cities in the United States that have become actual war zones, okay? These are some of the deadliest cities in the world, and we're supposed to live in a first world country where we have cities that, again, are more deadly than some of these cities in Mexico, right, that are, you know, facing cartel violence, right? Like, they're, they're actual war zones. And, again, there's silence on this issue, right? Absolute silence. Now, this woman here in this interview... Uh, you got to give her credit because she didn't seem to be too shaken, right? Which, again, is kind of crazy that it seemed like it was something she was kind of used to. She knew what to do immediately, right? Get down, get down, get down. She started praying. You know, she obviously relied on her faith, okay? And, um, you know, it was just a crazy thing to see. 
And I, again, I can't imagine living in a city like that where, again, you have to worry about doing an interview in the middle of some park and you got a drive-by shooting that happens like that. Again, imagine being a family or, you know, kids or whatever living in a city like Memphis. In fact, you actually don't have to imagine it because I'm going to show you a story of people and, and families that are living in fear due to thugs and criminals and gangs running the city. Take a look. Family living in fear after someone shoots at their home multiple times. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Hurst. Hi, I'm Stephanie Skurlock. With nowhere else to turn, they reached out to WREG's Jordan James in hopes of sharing their story to put an end to the violence. He joins us live now. And Jordan, what have you been able to find out? Hey, Stephanie, I spoke with a woman from that family and she tells me that they are being targeted as a result of a minor dispute and she's hopeful that an arrest can be made sometime here soon. And it's like too much going on and I just can't. The last week has felt like an eternity for a Memphis woman. No, my kids can't even go outside no more. A simple act this mother no longer takes for granted after she and her uncle were shot outside of her home on Eldridge Avenue. They had my kids crying. They thought I was going to be dead. By me coming in the house and I was dripping blood from down there, I didn't know what was going on down there. She tells WREG that this all stemmed from an argument at the B-52 market where a man allegedly threatened to kill her after she confronted him about her child. She says the man then followed her home and opened fire. I didn't have to go home by no argument. This shit just left it alone. It was just a petty argument. Mm -hmm. Petty arguments getting folks shot in there. I could have lost my life, but I'm still here. Here, despite multiple gunshot wounds, as she continues to heal, she hopes others can learn from her pain. Stop arguing with folks and stop thinking y'all so hard out here because we ain't hard like we, like we say we is and like we think we is. These folks in Memphis ready to kill. And at last check, an arrest has not been made in this case. If you know anything, call Crime Stoppers. That number again, 901-528-CASH. Reporting here live outside of North Main Precinct, Jordan James, WREG, News Channel 3. Yeah, so it's not only just families and their kids living in fear. Uh, you also have restaurant owners and business owners as well, too, that are demanding action as they're living in fear due to the crime in Memphis. Take a look. Memphis Restaurant Association took their concerns about customers and employee safety straight to elected leaders. WREG's Alex Coleman tells us what they're demanding and why crime could impact the Memphis economy. At a time when crime is directly affecting restaurants along with the safety of their employees and customers, members of the Memphis Restaurant Association are seeking answers and solutions and taking their concerns directly to the Shelby County Commission's Safety Committee. Big name restaurants from downtown on Beale to Huey's here uh, on Poplar, uh, and it was just uh, mainly a cry for help, um, you know, to, to see what's going on and what how this affects our staff our patrons. The Restaurant Association's cry for help was recently spelled out in a letter addressed to city and county leaders. Mike Miller is the owner of Patrick's Restaurant and president of the Restaurant Association. This is impacting us. When we have cars broken into regularly at restaurants, at hotels, um, it's it's a problem. So, you know, the, the, the letter was, hey, this is a big deal. And also, what are we going to do about it? Because whatever we're doing to date, it isn't working. The MRA says the restaurant, hospitality, and service industries employ thousands of people and help drive revenue to support the city. But the crime problem will change that. County Commissioner Mick Wright agrees. Crime is really having an impact on our restaurants, on our hospitality industry, and on our tourism. And so it goes beyond the individual crimes and the individual cars that are being stolen and the, the break-ins. It goes beyond that and it, it really has become an economic problem for our city. He says the Memphis Shelby Crime Commission has a strategy that needs to be enforced by police, sheriff's deputies, and the DA's office. We do have a plan. The Memphis Shelby Crime Commission Safe Community Action Plan really needs to be the one that all local officials are working toward, adopting and funding all of those actions. Actions the Restaurant Association hopes will help drive out crime. If there's a message to the whole thing, it's something's got to change. Not necessarily sure what that is, but we need 
we need our city leaders to come together. Alex Coleman, WREG TV, News Channel 3. Yeah, so as you can imagine, this city is being run by Democrats, unsurprisingly. Okay, the mayor is a Democrat, the county commissioner is a Democrat, and also their new DA is a Democrat. He's the first Democratic DA of that county uh, in decades, okay? Before they had a GOP uh, DA, DA that was known to be tougher on crime. Now, again, to me, you know, Memphis is a tough case. It is a minority majority city, which, you know, probably has a culture problem, okay? And sometimes, you know, you can lock a lot of criminals up, but it's just so many criminals that it can still be one of the most deadly cities in the country. It's just an unfortunate situation, okay? And I don't think that the proper response to that is to vote for a Democrat who's almost guaranteed to be soft on crime uh, as a way to change. Maybe, just maybe, I don't know, you need to vote for, you know, mayors and, and other leaders of the city uh, that are willing to be tough on crime, maybe not vote Democrats. But I'm just saying, that's just me. But regardless, uh, civilians, citizens are looking towards this DA for answers on the violent crime because, again, it, it's just out of control. Thanks for joining us. First at 10, politicians love to have town halls so they can hear what's on voters' minds. Well, tonight, things got heated at a town hall in Hickory Hill that was full of elected officials, including Shelby County's top prosecutor. Our Zaria Oates on why some folks have had enough. We objected, y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's okay. Okay. You really haven't did a whole lot. Okay, I, I'm hearing you loud and clear. You hear me loud and clear. Yes, I do. And you hear me loud and clear. And to vote and vote people out of office. What happens so many times is that we do not have term limits. If we had term limits in every branch of government, at every level of government, we could put people who are responsive to us. Right, yeah. In addition to term limits for all elected officials, the people of Shelby County want crime addressed immediately. It's a lot of our youth that are committing the crimes, and so we just really want to address that issue. These kids right now, they don't care about who you are or what condition you are. They're just robbing you, killing people out of nothing. So that's what I think is the worst right now. District Attorney Mulroy said he's taking steps to address violent crime as a whole by shifting focus away from smaller violations. So we're refocusing on violent crime. So I've instructed our prosecutors to really focus heavily on violent crime and uh, de-emphasize things that I think are less important, like, for example, possession of marijuana being laid on fines and fees. Commissioner Sugarman says she's ready to tackle the issues that haven't been touched, like holding the organizations accountable that are supposed to be making a difference, saying she feels like the Memphis Shelby County Crime Commission is not meeting her expectations, despite her being on the commission's board. Crime Commission, yes, holds a great deal of responsibility um, in being a, a, a board member for six months. I have not been impressed. I started having a dialogue with state legislators, not just in Shelby County, but joined the efforts across the state. Nearly half of those who attended were able to ask their questions and get answers from elected officials on crime, gun reform, and safety. Yeah, so what I find to be interesting about what's going on in Memphis, okay, it's a full-blown crime crisis, okay? People are being murdered in the street, families are being hunted down, you have drive-bys that are happening, doing interviews, and... Memphis got all this attention when five black police officers, plus, you know, allegedly a white man was involved too, uh, beat a black man to death in the street, right? It got all this attention. All these civil rights leaders went out to Memphis in virtue signal for money and clout. But they haven't been back. They haven't said anything about Memphis ever since then, and Memphis has suffered. Isn't it amazing how that works, right? Isn't it amazing how the so-called black leadership works, okay? One of the number one deadliest cities in the country for black people, they're silent, right? They, they only cared about it when they could gain something from it by crying white supremacy over five black police officers beating to death a black man. It's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing, okay? When they can push an anti-police narrative, a narrative that made Memphis disband the Scorpion unit, a unit that was highly successful and effective out in Memphis, right? 
Again, it might not have been everything that the city needed to stop violent crime, but hey, those guys were handbusters, right? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what led to them doing that, but I'm just saying, I thought it was something that was needed. I thought it was overall a net positive for a city like Memphis. But you know what they do? They, they get rid of that. The civil rights leaders are gone. They don't give a damn about the city anymore. And black folks are dying. Business owners are suffering. People are living in fear of their lives every single day, and you don't hear people about it. People only care when they can profit off of it. And that's just the reality of black folks in this country, right? And, and, and crime. Your so-called leaders never care unless they can get something out of it. They can't get anything out of actually addressing the real issue and what is actually causing black people to lose their lives every single day in these inner liberal cities, which are Democrats, right? And uh, some of their policies that I, I believe are too soft on crime, right? If being tough on crime isn't worker, working, then you just need to be tougher, right? Uh, again, if prisons are full, then you just need to build more prisons, okay? And you need to keep filling them up with criminals, okay? Because that's the only way that you fix some of these inner cities. They're that bad. You just have to continue to lock up criminals, lock up even more of them. You get tougher on crime. You don't get softer, right? You get softer, it's only going to get worse. I'm just saying. It's amazing what's happening in these cities, and nobody's really talking about it. Nobody's bringing attention to it because, again, you can't profit off of it. It's amazing. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.